Anyway, this is a, a, based on a very large empirical study of sales prices in the city of Copenhagen. So there's a very uh, there's a very large database containing both uh, apartments and single houses. Uh, that is the basis for this. Um, and it's used in this case to to um, to make a uh, evaluation of the willingness to pay for uh, sustainability. Uh, based on sustainability in this case is based on the typical criteria you find in all of these uh, lice, uh, lice and, uh, what, what is it? Certificates. Certificates green. for, for uh, sustainability. Uh, typically green and lean and these others. <coughs> And it's a paper written jointly, paper between Axel Heyman and Alexander Stoker <coughs> from Stockholm. Yes, it's about bringing us to pay. It's at least sustainability. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, of course, then uh, uh, the, the background is, of course, thinking will this actually, if these uh, certificates will be working and will get broader support, uh, it's very good if people also will be willing to pay for these supposedly qualities there. Uh, and it's based on the willingness to pay, the model of willingness to pay is uh, the maximum amount of person would be willing to pay, sacrifice or exchange in order to receive a good uh, good or to avoid something on the side. And of course there's a large amount of studies of this type, um, typically called different kinds of hedonistic models of, of people's willingness to pay for things. Um, in this case it's Copenhagen and uh, yes. And uh, uh, the two basic, uh, the, the, most of the criteria uh, analyzing this are uh, taken from these two leading certificates of um, sustainability, the sustainability building, and then try to tra be translated into more uh, uh, terms that will be possible to analyze in this uh, model. <coughs> For instance, uh, stressing the more, more general description. Uh, of, uh, to encourage uh, the, the criteria can be to encourage balance the new <coughs> diverse the uses and employment opportunities and then that is uh, interpreted into uh, in this case bringing us different vari variants of how you can uh, accomplish that to get the certificate so to speak right? uh, and for instance then um, in this case you could either include, uh, to accomplish this, you could either include a non-residential component equally in at least 30% of the parts of the building square footage uh, and locate uh, on an infill site whose geographic center uh, is within a half a mile walk distance of an existing trade rate. No, this is not quite one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the option two. Option two. Option two. There's two. Okay. So it's a mix of the, of the residential and housing. Project residential commercial. Mm -hmm. Yes. You could, so you have different ways you could do this. And, and we will take this as an example just to show how later on we'll translate that into something that's uh, possible to analyze in the model. Uh, in, in this case, it's include the residential component equal to this third percent across total building square footage and locate or and or design the project such that the geographic center is within half a mile walk distance of existing full-time equipment jobs whose number is equal to here. Anyway, um, we'll be uh, we'll show later on how that can be translated into to, uh, in, in, into the model. Anyway, the whole the whole this is the uh, the whole area that is analyzed. So I think it's uh, unfortunate that it's gonna be presented properly because it's a huge database in the background of this. It's a city uh compares more or less the uh, the, the density of, of Copenhagen. Uh, <coughs> it's based on sixteen thousand five hundred apartment sales, four thousand seven hundred single family house sales. Uh, it comprises all utilities by the category schools, restaurants, bars, museums, libraries, clubs, etc. so that we can uh, calculate accessibility to, to uh, amen amenities of this kind and then, then uh, correlate that with sales prices. 
It also includes buildings, including square footage uh, for living area, commercial area, year build height, number of rooms, facade, and room, etc. Also, then possible to correlate to the sales prices and see what people are willing to pay for. And also, a huge amount of uh, people data, a number of uh, uh, people work at work and residents, in, uh, and also uh, details on this concerning income, education level, etc. So it's a very rich database to, to ask questions to. <coughs> and uh, show one example of how this is translated uh, into variables in the model. Uh, housing and job proximity, uh, for example, uh, was an example we were talking about earlier. To encourage balanced community within with a diversity of uses and employment of opportunities. Uh, and as we saw the, the thing I was reading from the uh, Green case earlier is that either you can uh, develop accessibility to workplaces within one kilometer walking distance or functional compactness within 500 meters walking distance. You can do either of these. And just to show how we are able to. Uh, Make, translate that into images. This is where this is using the place syntax tube that uh, to great deal was developed by Alexander Stolman. Uh, how we from each and every this must be sales yeah. yeah. sales somewhere where we're an apartment or a single house is sold. <laughs> And in this case, uh, how many uh, uh, residents or what was it? This is working opportunities within working one kilometer. Yeah, you should do this instead. Within uh, 1,000 meters. So it's a huge, it's a very, also a very powerful tool. We have a great database and it's a very powerful analytical tool of, of calculating the accessibility to all of these variables that are within the model. And in this case, you have a thousand, uh, within 1,000 meters from each and every place where something is sold. Uh, working opportunities would be that great. Uh, or in this case, uh, the accessibility uh, to um, uh, residents or people, of work, working people, uh, multiply with each other, which was another criteria for free, but which can be visualized very distinctly in this way. <coughs> Uh, some uh, in the statistical model, some known variables to, to be important were controlled for. For example, square uh, the size of the houses or um, uh, apartments, <coughs> distance this, uh, distance to city center, of course, distance to waterfront, and also socioeconomic index, so that uh, these would not disturb the, the valuation. Uh, and also, it's important to note that apartments and single-family houses were considered as different markets because it's an assumption that either you were looking for a single-family house or for an apartment. It's not, it's not totally clean, but uh, uh, still, it's done. Uh, <coughs> and here are some of the results. There were no uh, a huge amount of different variables tested, and when it came to come to apartments, it was 19 of them that proved to be. Uh, significant, 19 that uh, mostly, I guess, have pulled from the, the certificates, but there were also others added that could be of interest of a different, little different kind. So 19 of these were proved significant for apartments and 7 for single family houses, but not necessarily in a positive way. I think the general conclusion here seems to be that uh, people are not very willing to for these uh, qualities that are, are, are uh, prescribed in these certificates. It's not something that people would go out and pay for, even though if you would ask them, they would be very happy to say, yes, I want to support sustainability. Yes, I want the city of Copenhagen to be more sustainable. Yes, we should take all kinds of decisions to do that. But when it comes to me choosing my, where I'm going to live, I am not these qualities when show up. It's not a decisive thing for what I choose to, to uh, uh, where I choose to live or what, where I want to spend my money. <coughs> uh, some of them are and, and some are not. And, and, uh, uh, yes. Um, and of course in that, of course, there is a big debate of the whole thing about hedonistic models, what they capture and do not capture. I'm not going to that, but obviously 
industry. But at the same time, I mean, generally we are very, very interested in it can influence us something and an you know, important dimension of, of people's preferences. Um, and I'm not sure what this is. Um, yes. Um, did you? Yeah, one could say that uh, it's also the paper wants to include a critique towards those criteria. Yeah, that would be important. Yes. Because uh, yeah. yeah. it's very, the definition of neighborhoods, they are very limited. And as we know from Space Index uh, results, we know that also what's happening just outside is very, very important. So that is a critique. You
the, the way I didn't read the paper, so I, I can't really say. But I, th I would say that the question uh, should be whether, how important is it, even if we are not willing to pay on an individual basis, that should not be the criteria whether we should uh, continue with it, but it might be put in the agenda that that is a collective thing that we should sort of um, take that on another level instead of trying to understand whether you are willing to pay for it. Uh, a house that has a certificate. I think that's not, in a way, not re relevant. It's relevant in the sense that you can say then, no, that should be on... on um, um, it's relevant, exactly. Well, yeah, but, but in another like way... If you're not willing to pay, then we need to put that on, a, on another payment level, right? Yes, it's you can solve it. that you are not willing to pay. Mm -hmm. so, so, but I don't think it's... I don't know if it's stressed in the paper, but it should. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. It's, it's, it's two questions, you know, the hedonic problem has a problem. But I just wanted to, to comment that uh, years ago we did some, I, I worked with hedonic models and, and discrete choice models. And one of the most important results we found was that we, we phrased it at the end like that the people were typically human beings, which meant that they valued what, what they didn't have and they didn't value what they had. Like, for example, we were trying to see how much people were willing to trade off for having a bigger house or for living near downtown. I remember those were some of the variables. So we separated our, our data from small houses and big people that lived in small houses and people that lived in big houses. And we did a relation, you know, how many bedrooms to the amount of the, the size of the family. Well, people that lived in small houses were willing to pay a lot for having an extra bedroom. People that lived in big houses were willing to pay nothing for an extra bedroom. So as soon as they had the the the, the attribute, yeah. they wouldn't. And the same was with distance to downtown. So the people that lived near downtown, I remember it was 20 minutes bus travel that we was our currency. And you, you know, when you were living at one hour from the city, you were willing to pay, you know, because oh, we were doing it. We weren't doing it with money, but with an extra bedroom or a, another attribute. It was exchange of attributes. And it was really interesting. But what really proved is that the tool is really, uh, I don't know how useful it is in the end, the hedonic tools. That's what I mean. Because no, I've done it other times. Okay, that's a huge debate. Because that. it depends a lot on, the, on, uh, on what you have. What it, it can give a negative response, <coughs> perhaps, and not a positive one. Mm -hmm. right? no, but the negative response may be as important as uh, the positive one. And then what you were saying is another thing, and, and I agree totally, that it doesn't, you know, the, the private, in, in this case, the private uh, willingness to pay maybe is irrelevant. If, if, yeah. if the public, dis, you know, the public, uh, the government decides that it is important you know, the willingness to pay. Yeah, but you can get rather surprised when you read these uh, certificates and, and the criteria, mm -hmm. and, and you constantly ask yourself, what, what, what is this based on? Is it, uh, and, and the kinds of, uh, it's, it's quite difficult. They have actually tried to make, turn sustainability criteria into measurable things. Yes. And I mean, that, 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 I mean that is, and they have done it. It's out there. It's it's what, and what this, people use. And I think that is. I mean, in the research community, you think, oh, it takes a lot of years, but it's already there, and it's okay, it's good. constantly being and, used. I and think. certificates are used to 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 build the price of something. Uh, yeah. For instance, because yeah, yeah, yes, but like a like a fridge, for instance. The right, the right. A level of yes, a, yeah. A level. Yeah. They, are, they are used to like build the price. Yes, yes, yes. For instance, an A level development may have some tax reduction of some or kind. But they, or they're also for a tax. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah, you can uh, use it to, it has, to pay it, a tax it is incorporated in and give a service, okay. for example. Yes. So it is very important. You see, there were lots of questions, and you. There's another one. We have another. This is the most valid. Yes. <laughs> you know, you spent four years, but really, I, I, I gave it. Yeah, I, I think at some point this discussion is related to this issue, this fashionable issue of bottom-up urbanism. If he gives everything to the demand of, of, of individuals, 
I, I see a danger that, that, you know, me as an individual, I might not see, I might not be able to see the, the public good. So my personal interest, for instance, would be to eat as much as fish as I can, but that might not be exactly public good. So I, if we, I mean, we need an example in, 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 this, in this book, uh, Space is the Machine, clearly says that there is no such thing as bottom design. And I totally agree with him because we are, as, as, as designers, I mean, intellectual designers are somehow in charge of making certain decisions because we can, by looking at maps, for instance, we can see the public good. What is the public good? That I, 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 I see a danger in the machine. I mean, I agree that those uh, criteria maps are not so clear about certain things. But if we really look at, look at the demand of people for, for certain things, then if we, we go in the direction of market, and I don't think that is necessarily the direction of public good in terms of sustainability. I agree. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't question, but I... But don't say that. I mean, it's... Uh, it's uh, yeah. No, but you could, for example, calculate how much willing people are willing to have their 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 streets uh, greened, and and you could maybe put a local tax for them to pay. Would they do that sort of calculation? You know, like people really want to have green areas around, and you can calculate how much people are willing to have in their local authority tax to have a better open space. Which then the, the good thing about the, the interesting thing. Or well, the important thing about it is that it is things that you might want, but you can't have by yourself. You know, you can't buy, even if you have a lot of money, to have a better street. But if a local authority studies this and calculates that everybody is willing to pay a certain amount of an extra local tax, you can. So I think that is useful for that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, but then you can't uh, exactly. But then you can't measure it with uh, selling prices. That's it. No, no, no. Other, other but, but, but for that sort of thing, I think it's. I, I, I've seen it used, and I think it's quite good because the people also agree on it. You know, they say we are willing to pay so and so, and we will have a green area, or we will have, you know, uh, the garbage taken once every day instead of once a week. You know, that sort of services that even if you're rich, you cannot have uh, because it's it's public services. But if the question is made um, in, in a neutral way, um, all right, you, we can um, deduce uh, some um, useful uh, results. But if the, um, if the question is formulated um, in a deterministic way, no, um, no, no. And for example, uh, the, the evaluation uh, of, of, um, of land uh, in a certain sector, um, then uh, the process is um, is not sustainable. I mean, no. by any means. I mean, uh, and, and besides, it creates a problem uh, because sometimes the value is false because there are qualities which are not uh, included uh, or qualities which are positive which are not considered. So I think um, um, the issue of evaluation is very delicate. No, I, I know it's very delicate. Yeah, yeah. For example, in, in the re rehabilitation of urban centers, it can be, you know, that's what I'm thinking about. That there are things that, could, for example, when a local authority wants an area that is sort of deteriorated, it, one of the ways they can turn the the wheel around is with this sort of thing. But I've seen it done to cert with certain At this very moment, I mean, I, I can tell you, I mean, the, the, the area I know, uh, there is a particular firm, a specialist in buying uh, the chamfer corners in Barcelona. Yeah. Because uh, there, with the minimum waste uh, in uh, distribution, um, you have got the maximum uh, area. And um, this particular firm uh, is demolishing um, some buildings which uh, could be uh, uh, considered as uh, of heritage. Of course. So, uh, and uh, it is very delicate the issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, if, if we, we could agree on, on those points, many things could be maintained. And for example, the whole 
um, the whole um, strategy uh, of um, things such as uh, uh, using uh, uh, alternative uh, sources of, of, of energy. In, in the case of Barcelona, uh, or Spain at this very moment, um, the uh, energy companies um, are totally biased. Are repeating all the time that um, well that they are losing money, but in fact uh, it is ages since um, they haven't built uh, a dam. Sadly, my money is Okay. <laughs> I think we should just.